So today I thought maybe I could show you how I make uh, one of the cards that I sell in my Etsy shop. This is um, a Sailor Moon card. Um, I sell a lot of anime and pop culture cards in my shop. And I am out of this one, so I need to restock. And I thought maybe I could film it and show you the process. Um, this video is probably going to be a little bit long because it's pretty involved, but in case anybody was curious, I thought I would show you how it goes. So the first thing I do is basically the main event. I am going to do the water coloring because that will need a little bit to dry and um, while I'm doing other things that can dry. And uh, don't mind the backs of these sheets, I'm just showing you. Um, you can use both sides of the Tim Holtz watercolor paper, which is awesome. I messed up the backs of these because I was trying to test to see if certain fine liners were water fast, which they were not because they all smeared on me, of course. So I am uh, just reusing the back of this paper because it's still good. You can use both sides. So... First, I stamp the stamp onto Tim Holtz watercolor paper, usually. I buy the little ones, just because it's easier to manage, I buy the little ones that you put, that are the same size as the front of a card. In this case, four and a quarter by five and a half, and tape it down. So this is the stamp that I use. It is a Stampin' Bella stamp, and basically when I make my pop culture cards, I pretty much shop around for stamps that I can edit in some way, or change in some way, so that it looks like whatever character. In this case, uh, Sailor Moon and Endymion, Tuxedo Mask, whatever. And yep, after I tape it down so that it doesn't curl, I stamp this image with uh, stays on ink so that it doesn't bleed when I put water on it. And you'll see here I'm doing three. Uh, it's just because I am out of these cards and I need stock. So I usually make three or five, sometimes even ten of these at a time. It's just more economical as far as time. <laughs> But yeah, so I stamp them out, and then I use India ink to edit the stamp. Uh, some stamps I edit, I don't stamp the whole stamp. So, and I, I usually like that method better. But because this is a really big stamp, and it's really, um, it's really intricate, it's hard to skip certain sections of it so instead of skipping the sections I just pretty much literally ignore them it, it'll look kind of kind of messy and busy now as I'm editing with my dip pen and India ink um, this little pot is just regular plain India ink straight out of the bottle I just buy a really big um, pint of Higgins ink at a time usually and it's you can't use it straight out of that bottle that would be ludicrous so I decanted into this little container so but yeah I um it looks a little bit a little bit messy I guess doing it this way but when you block in the color actually you hardly notice the like extra details, if you will, they really kind of disappear. But yeah, so let the India ink totally dry. I usually set it aside for a good half an hour just to be sure it's totally dry because India ink is water soluble until it dries, then it's water fast, which is a really cool thing. Um, so yeah, we'll come back to, I come back to it in about half an hour and it's ready for watercoloring. Now, you can use anything you want to watercolor. Pan sets, I have the Sterwent Ink Tense set, I have um, a Winsor & Newton set, I have a Sakura Koi set. 
I've used my watercolor pencils. I have two watercolors I've used before. The I use the Mi Yellow, Mi Hello, Mi Jello. I even and I use Tim Holtz Distress Ink um, to watercolor as well. Today I'm just gonna use the Distress Ink because that was pretty much literally the first thing I put my hands on, and it's easy. But like I said, you can use anything you want to watercolor these as long as it is water soluble. I you could I've never used them before, but I'm sure you could use uh, water-based brush pens and a water brush and like, you know, blend it. I'm sure that would work fine. Whatever medium you want to use um, that's water soluble would be great for this. <laughs> Okay, now once uh, that is all done, set that aside to dry completely. And once it is dry, I take it and fussy cut it out. There's nothing fancy or, you know, anything like that about it. You just fussy cut it. You can't use a die with these, even if, I don't think these stamps have dies, but even if they did, on other stamps that I use that do have dies, you can't use the die because you've edited the actual shape, the actual silhouette of the stamp. So your only option really is to just fussy cut it. And once you're done fussy cutting it, the last thing I do is I take a black brush pen. In this case, I have my Memento uh, brush pen. I use this one a lot, uh, the bullet tip, to edit stamps as well. When I stamp things in my Memento ink, usually when I'm going to do some Copic coloring rather than watercolor. In this case, um, I am just going to go around the edge with it, as you can see and darken that edge. Now, it dulls down the paper on the edge um, because when you cut it, of course, you can see the core, the white core of the paper, and that's less attractive. This makes it just look a little more finished and professional. So you go around the edge with the black marker of your choosing. This, it doesn't really matter what black marker you use because it doesn't need to be water fast anymore because we're not adding any more water, like for watercolor or anything. So any black brush pen will do. I do recommend using a brush pen. Um, I've used my Copic Multiliner brush pen before. I've used my Faber-Castell brush pen before. It doesn't matter what brush pen you use. And then just a little tip um, that I've learned Sometimes when you're going around the outside edge, if you start going too quickly, your hand will slip and you'll draw on the paper. To sort of ensure that the draw, the marker slip, will always go on the back of what you're drawing on, hold your image right side up and make sure that you're holding the brush from the bottom. So the fat part of the fatter part of the brush should be on the bottom because then if your hand slips, it's gonna go underneath the paper rather than on top of the paper because I've had it go on top before and totally ruin what I was doing. It's very frustrating. So yeah, just hold the brush from underneath the picture and run it around the edge because again, if it slides, it's gonna go on the bottom, it's not gonna go on the top and it's not gonna ruin what you're working on. And now that we've finished the watercolor, we'll put that aside. And that will be the very last thing that we add besides embellishments. So that can set aside for a while. While that was drying, I did some of these other steps, but I just wanted to show you that all at once. I figured it would be easier. Anyway, so now on to card bases. 
so I use pink card bases. This is um, some glittery pink stock. I actually don't really like this paper. It's nice, heavy, thick cardstock because I use really thick cardstock for my cards. I I like the the feeling of something of heavier stock in my hand, so I buy heavy stock. But this is, it's like metallic -y glittery paper, and it's like slippery. If you stamp directly on it, which I do for a couple of cards, like my Deadpool card, one of my Deadpool cards, for example, it will smudge. It will smear. It's very annoying. You have to let it sit and dry for a long time. Even stays on will smear if you don't let it sit for a very long time. So you take your eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and cut it in half on the long edge on the 11 inch side at five and a half and then you grab your scoreboard. I like to use a scoreboard. You could always just fold it in half, but because I use super thick paper, I prefer to use a scoreboard. And I just, here's my Teflon bone folder, score it in half, and then I always fold the card with the part that I scored on the outside. Because I've, I've, folded it the other way before and every once in a while, not very often, but every once in a while the cardstock will crack and it's very annoying because I don't like that wrinkly cracked look on the spine of the card. It's the entire reason that you use a scoreboard and it defeats its own purpose if it ends up cracking anyway. So I fold it so that the scored part is on the outside, the part that I actually ran the bone folder over on that side is on the outside because it doesn't crack that way, or at least I find it doesn't crack that way. Okay, and next is the inside of the card. I use this uh, stationery I got. It is uh, foiled stationery, so it has that metallic foil already on it in the image. And it's just like a little bit of extra detailing on the inside of the card. I really think it's cute and I like it. So we are going to take this paper and cut it. Uh, usually I can get four cards out of one sheet because of course you can get four pieces. Um, so I cut it a quarter inch short on both sides. So instead of cutting it at five and a half by four and a quarter, I cut it at four by five and a quarter so there's a little bit of a pink border around the edge and the inside after I put it in. And the message on the inside, it's one stamp. Sometimes I have cards who have really custom messages on the inside or on the outside. And I have to spell them out with alphabet stamps and it's very annoying. But this one's just one stamp, thankfully. And we are going to emboss it with some copper embossing powder. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do when I am going to emboss is I'm going to, usually I'll use my embossing buddy. I can't find my embossing buddy, of course, the second I want it for a video and I can't find it. So the other thing that I do periodically use, and I find that it actually works just as well, so I don't really care that I can't find my embossing buddy, this is fine. I will use just a regular paintbrush and uh, some cornstarch. So you just dip the paintbrush into the cornstarch, smear it on the outside, no problem. Tap off the excess if you, you know, get a little bit too much. And then you take your stamp and you ink it up with your Versamark ink, the sticky clear ink, and give it a stamp. Now, because these are words, the letters are, are kind of thin in places, so really, Really make sure you get that ink on there, and then really make sure you stamp it real well, real clear. Don't rock the stamp too much. Because it's a wooden base stamp, I can rock it a little bit more than a photopolymer stamp, usually. But don't rock it too much, because then you'll, you'll screw up your lines, and then the words will look messy. But anyway, so you stamp them out, and then you coat them in the copper embossing powder. This is the Hero Arts copper embossing powder. And I shake off the excess and then I turn the card face down and give it a little flick just to make sure all the excess is gone. Uh, do that for all of the messages. Make sure you don't stack these on top of each other because it's not set yet. You have to set it with a heat gun 
and if you stack them on top of each other, you will smudge it, and then you will be sad. <laughs> I've done that before accidentally. So then you grab your heating gun, your heat tool, and the best way to emboss is to definitely wait for it to heat up. Wait for it to heat up until it's real super hot, so just let it run. Point it off to the side and let it run for, you know, 30 seconds or so. Just so it gets good and hot because the faster you can emboss, the less likely your paper will warp. Because paper warping is a pro, especially for thin computer paper like this, since I'm using um, stationary paper, not cardstock, for this inside part, it, this will warp. So be careful. Don't let the heat gun sit for too long on it. Um, but yeah, then you put the heat gun on it, emboss it. And then it is all set. After you emboss it, I use this Miss Sparkle and Co. Uh, one inch thick double-sided adhesive. Um, I'm just showing you this is a package of it. Um, I am using one that I was already open, but I thought I'd show you the package. It's $2 a pack at... Joanne Fabrics, which is great, and it works really well. It's very strong. It grabs really well. I've never had a problem with it. The Miss Sparkle & Co. tape runner, however, not good. Don't use it. <laughs> I've done that. I've made that mistake. Don't use it. Just don't. Do yourself a favor. But yeah, so cover the back with adhesive and peel off the adhesive back, the backing, the, the shiny backing, the release paper, whatever we're calling it, and whack it inside the card. Just make sure you line it up so the border is even. And that is the inside of the card done. Moving on to the front of the card, we will do the lowest layer first and sort of build them up. This card has a lot of layers on it. It's what makes it pretty. So uh, layer one, uh, we'll need a really light pink paper and I have a whole bunch of different ones here. I've, I use 12 by 12 uh, papers. I use my six inch, uh, six by six card um, stack or paper stacks. Um, anything that's just a really light pink will work just fine here. Um, right here I'm cutting it to, basically I'm just cutting a piece out of the, of the little paper packs because I don't like to tear out those. Um, but you can, it's totally fine. Uh, the strip ends up being about two inches wide, so just plan for that. It doesn't really, it doesn't really matter how much you have as long as it's more than two-ish inches. And, uh, so... You take a punch now, and you can use any edge punch you want here. I have a couple here to show you, a couple different ones. Um, I have a butterfly one, which is my favorite one to use, but um, it's a little time consuming because it's a smaller punch. It doesn't punch as many sections. It only punches one scallop of butterflies at a time, which can be annoying. But you punch the edge out. Um, in this case, the um, you want to use um, any edge punch. Uh, I've got, like I say, these butterflies, these hearts. I prefer the butterflies, but you use whatever you have. Any uh, pretty decorative edge stamp will be fine. So you punch along the edge, make sure you line it up nicely so that your edge is nice and continuous and there's no, you know, messed up holes or anything. And then you're going to cut it at right around the two inch mark is good. Uh, depending on the size of your stamp, like the little heart stamp, sometimes I'll cut the strip a little bit skinnier. Wow, stamp. Hmm. Depending upon the size of your punch, you might want to change that a little bit, sort of eyeball it. Sometimes for that, if I use the heart one, I'll slim down the amount of paper, so I'll cut it at like one and a half because it's a thinner stamp, thinner, because it's a thinner punch, but you just want to, you just want a strip to put, 
<laughs> on your card, basically. And then I wax some adhesive on the back of it, and it goes lined up with the the creased size of the folded side of the front of the card so the the decorative edge lines up right along that uh folded edge of the card on the far side on the far left side of the front of the card and once you've adhered it uh, all you gotta do is turn the card open the card up uh, cut from the back, it's usually easier. And usually I use bigger scissors, but I can't find my bigger scissors, so I'm just using these little tiny ones that I use to fussy cut, and cut it off so that it's flush against the edge of the card. Next you will need some contrasting paper. Uh, usually I try and make it super light or super dark, or um, have an accent color like be a little bit more blue have some purple in it just something so that it stands out from the pink of the rest of the card and you will need to cut that to three inches by four and a quarter inches and that is going to be your second panel it goes on the right hand side of the card so you put some adhesive on the back and line it up flush with the right hand side of the card so that the four and a quarter inch side is against the edge of the card and then it goes across the card three inches and it should meet up with um, the other the other paper the other color of paper Next, you'll need some vellum. I use this 40 pound vellum by Basil. It's the thickest vellum I can find, and I like it the best. I'm obsessed with using thick stocks. So I take um, this little stamp I have that says, All You Need Is Love, and my stays on ink once again, and just stamp it a couple of times. Um, I stamp it in sort of the middle of the short sort of the middle of one half of the short side of the paper and then the middle of the other half because I know it's going to have to be about four and a quarter tall to meet up with the edge of that little piece of accent paper we just put on. So I'm going to cut and then I'm going to take my paper cutter and I'm going to cut so that the strip is just as wide as this little stamp. And it's actually reasonably easy to do because of the vellum, because you can see through it. So you can see where the edge of my paper trimmer is because I have the guillotine style paper cutter. You can see where it hangs off the edge and you can line that right up with the cutting blade and then slice it. And then after you cut it, I um, stick it down. I use a lot of different things, honestly. Um, sometimes I use mini glue dots. Sometimes I will use double-sided adhesive. Right now I'm using some Ranger Multimedia Mat because that's what I had on hand. It was the first thing I grabbed, so it works. <laughs> then after you put that down, we will have to make those little decorative bars of hearts that go across the top and bottom of the card. For that, I use this metallic a sticky back vinyl. It is uh, comes in this tube, and I'm gonna in this video I'm gonna use some scrap that I had from a different project, just because it's perfectly good still, and I do try not to waste it. It's a little expensive. But, and I'm going to show you uh, a couple of different options for what you can do for um, making this little strip. And I do, again, whatever I happen to have on hand at the time is the method that I use. I, my favorite method is probably the die cutting method. It makes the cleanest cuts. But when it looks a little rough, that also tends to look kind of good. It's like that sort of shabby chic sort of feel, I guess. Um, so I like it either way. Um, the die cut's also probably the easiest, but that's probably also because I have a vagabond, so I just like push a button and a couple of times and it's done. <laughs> uh, you could also probably do this with a Cricut. I have a Cricut machine and I've never used uh, it for this before, but I'm sure it would work just fine. 
So uh, what I do is I will take a punch of some kind in this case. Uh, this is just a Stampin' Up! mini heart and just punch a bunch of these out. And as you punch them, peel off the back and stick them down on a piece of just plain white cardstock. This is 80 pound cardstock in a line. And it's as simple as that. Sometimes when you're using a punch, when I'm using a punch, I find that the um, the vellum will stick, or not vellum, I'm sorry, the uh, vinyl will stick, or like the adhesive backing will come off, and then the sticky vinyl will be like exposed, which is not so good. It gums up your stamps or your punches sometimes, but it's not that hard to clean out. Usually I use a uh, tweezers to place these hearts, so I make sure that I get them in a nice straight line with a even spacing, but I can't find my tweezers. And then after you have a row of those, you just tr um, put some adhesive on the back. I'm using, again, this is the same brand double-sided adhesive that Mrs. Sparkle & Co. This is just the quarter inch wide tape. Um, I put a strip of that on the back, um, peel off the release, stick it down, and then I trim, turn over the paper again, turn over the card rather again. It's the easiest to trim from the back, so always. You can always see the line much better. So you trim the excess off and then you put more adhesive if you need to or I put a long strip on so I don't need to add more but you put it on the top and bottom basically of those two pieces we just put on the vellum and the accent paper just to kind of box it in so it looks like almost like it's almost like a frame and then these are three different versions of the same method just using different things uh, this the first one of, that I demonstrated with is the punch. This one is an all-over punch uh, by Martha Stewart, which you can pick out the little hearts and stick them down. And then this is a Stampin' Up. No, it's not. This is a Simon Says Stamp die that I um, use. I like the, the Simon Says Stamp method probably the best because like I, like I said the die cut is the easiest but I also like the Martha Stewart all over stamp or all over punch entirely because it punches out multiple hearts at once rather than with the Stampin' Up mini heart stamp that or mini heart punch that I have you have to do it one at a time and it can get pretty tedious but it's whatever your preference is whatever you happen to have on hand will do just fine it'll do the job and we are almost done Next is this die from um, Our Daily Bread Designs called Ornate Hearts, and I cut out a white heart using the biggest die without any of the inserts, just that big, um, roughly Valentine's Day heart, if you will. And then that gets some adhesive on the back, and it goes... I line up the left edge of the scalloped heart lace frilly stuff, with the edge of that vellum strip because I don't want it to really overlap it and so I, I, I put on as much of the heart as possible and then and that varies a little bit depending on where exactly you put the vellum and then I turn the card over again and trim off the excess for that heart and then last but not least as far as the uh, design elements go I guess we are going to bring back the watercolor Sailor Moon and Endymion, and they get some uh, dimension. I will put some mounting tape on the back. This is just regular 3M wall mounting tape, foam tape, and we'll just put a whole bunch of that on the back of them and put them on. I put Sailor Moon on over as far as she can. Usually her foot is overlapping the vellum a little bit so I can get as much of the image on as possible and then once again turn it over and trim off the excess. Usually it's just a little bit of Tuxedo Commons cape and then maybe a little a couple of the frills on her dress again depending on where you put the vellum and all that, how much space you're going to have. 
And then that's all the design elements put on. The only thing left to do is put on any little embellishments. And I will use anything for embellishments from little flat back pearls to little crystals to um, enamel dots, buttons I've used before. I have some star shaped buttons that are cute. Uh, It entirely, whatever you have, just little embellishments, just to make it a little more pretty and a little more interesting. I also will usually use uh, Nouveau Drops. I have many colors. You just pick a color. Sometimes I use pink. Sometimes I use copper. I use gold. Whatever. Just use a little bit of the Nouveau Drops, and I usually make at least one heart. And that's really easy. You just make a little blob and then drag it down a little ways and then make another little blob right next to the first blob and drag it down to meet the other like little drag. And it makes a little heart. And then you just have to let that sit and dry. The Nouveau drops take a while to dry. I usually give it an hour or two just to be safe because sometimes the outer layer of the Nouveau drops will dry, but the underside is still gooey and it will mess up if you go to the next step which i guess if you're not selling the card is not really the next step i guess maybe putting it in an envelope would be your next step but again i would wait a few hours if you use nouveau drops just to be sure that they're dry and last but not least is packaging now um if you're not selling these then you just next would be to put it in an envelope I guess and address it or put someone's uh, name on it but for me I sell these so I every card that I sell gets is put in a little plastic sleeve and I include an envelope as well as one of these little sealant stickers so you don't have to lick it it's like the ones that you get for from like if you buy cards from papyrus you uh, get these little adhesive circles so that you don't have to lick the card because i that's gross. I don't like to do that. I wouldn't want other people to have to do that. So that's why I include it. But yeah, you just seal it up in there. And then the card is all set. I'm really sorry that this tutorial was so long, but you know... I mean, it's a very long process. These cards, sometimes these cards take me hours to make. So it's, you know, it's a little bit of one way versus the other. Uh, But anyway, let me know if you like this tutorial. I've never put a card tutorial up before. Um, I don't know if anybody would be interested in them, but I thought I'd try it out, you know, because it's something that I do. Uh, Let me know if you want to see more tutorials. Uh, Let me know in my Etsy shop if you want which ones you want tutorials of because I'll do tutorials for any of them I don't care um it's just a very long filming process it took me all day which (laughs) I was not expecting but it did uh but anyway yeah so if you give me a like and a comment so let me know what you want to see as far as um cards and also let me know which method you liked best for that of that vinyl I like I say I'm pretty sure I like the die cutting method the best but I'd be super interested to know which ones you guys like the best do you do you like the little punches do you like the bigger punch do you like the die cuts I I don't know I I've, I've never asked anybody that before so um let me know what you think I'd be interested Uh, But yeah, so uh, like, subscribe, share, comment, all those good things, and I will have a new video up for you soon. Um, Until then, I will talk to all of you later. Bye!